one of the great moments we've seen in Canadian sports history. Nick Taylor winning the 2023 RVC Canadian Open. And for much more on this win and some other exciting things coming down as well. Now joining us, Canadian legend, Laurie Kane on the line. Laurie, welcome back to Golf Talk Canada. Hey, how are we doing? We are great, thank you. Before we get into it, Lori, first of all, it was great to see you in person. We had a we chatted for maybe five, ten minutes. So this was Tuesday, the, the big merger day at Oakdale when uh, the golf world was exploding, and it was great to actually see you and, and talk to you in 3D. Yeah, thanks. It was. Um, I couldn't have picked a better week, I don't think, to be in Toronto and I <laughs> uh, get to hang out at um, the RBC and to be. Uh, involved with a couple of different things going on all week but um yes the chat on tuesday it's funny how the world writes itself um i think that this win by nick and um dave was awesome yesterday that's uh 72 feet of uh wonderful glory and i I said this on sports center last night this is a moment that you'll never forget where you were and what you were doing when that putt went down so laurie for you where were you? Paint us a picture of your situation watching Nick Taylor. Well, I jumped on a plane to come home, which uh, probably should have been at um, Oakdale, but I, I had to get back to PEI, and unfortunately, uh, no TV for me to watch. <laughs> so no. I, was, I saw what he was doing as I boarded the plane, and I hoped that I would land in time to, uh, to see some kind of finish and hopefully a Canadian on top. And... Um, I was able to get to my house as the playoff was starting. Oh. Well, actually, no. The first playoff hole, I'd listen to Mark <laughs> <laughs> commentate that on uh, on Sirius and um, and then watched it. And it was just, uh, yeah, uh, you're 100% right. I can tell you, I was thinking, seeing Mike and all the guys standing out on the green on both, supporting both Tommy and Adam, that um, I understand the European side of the Ryder Cup and how they support one another. And then I also know the the camaraderie that uh, the Canadian guys have for each other on the PGA Tour, and that was clear yesterday. But I was thinking about 20 years ago when when Mike had won the green jacket for this country. And and now it's just a special, and um, yeah, this is is a cool time for golf. It's certainly a very cool time for golf, but in terms of significance, in terms of significance for golf in our country and golf period, how special do you think is this victory by Nick Taylor winning the Canadian Open? Well, it's huge. Um, you know, it took a, the same applied on the women's side prior to Brooke winning uh, the CPKC in 218 in Regina. Um, you know, you don't kids don't know until they know, and and they need to see things. Um, the excitement yesterday in Toronto, across across TVs, across you know this country, um, it's going to make a difference. Uh, kids are going to want to pick up clubs and and give it a try and be the next Nick Taylor, as they are on our side, on the women's side, wanting to be Brooke. Um, and many many years ago, Nick Taylor wanted to be Mike Weir, and um, it's clear to me that you know we're doing the right things. Golf Canada needs. Um, to be credited for some of the programs that they're trying to put together, push through, but we don't do anything without corporate sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Um, My relationship with CPKC is moving the needle as RBC is moving the needle in men's golf with the Canadian Open. So those are the things. We're all uh, rowing in the right direction, shall we say, um, (laughs) to making the game the best it can be and accessible to everyone. Absolutely. And, you know, it's it's great, too, that – the, the depth we're seeing in Canadian professional golf. You know, even looked PGA Tour champion. Stephen Ames has won three times this year. Brooke Henderson, who's the, the winningest Canadian professional golfer, got that another victory earlier this year. Four Canadians have won on the PGA Tour already this season. We're only in June. How awesome is it for you, Lori, to see the depth of Canadian golf right now? Well, it's great. Um... I'd like to be playing a little bit more and competing myself. I got, <laughs> I feel like I need to get back out there. But um, no, I think it it just goes to show that you know we're we've always been a hockey country, no doubt, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but golf is is a passion right across the the board, and um, I think 
you know, we've got I, COVID was probably a friend to us in Canada with with relation to golf, and people are playing the game. And but it also takes support at the top, um, which I think we're giving to our professional athletes, which is you know kind of the trickle down effect is happening. Um, I wasn't. I'll be honest with you. I didn't think I saw this coming so quickly. Um, but when you see the guys winning like they are, that pulls each other along. And I think Nick was so eloquent in his speech yesterday and in his presser. I listened to it uh, late last night. And, um, you know, he's the guys just are not afraid to do whatever it's going to take to make them better every day. And it's clear to me that um, I talked to Nick on Friday after his, his really good round to get him back in the event and he basically said to me you know this is i'm i'm going to do something with this now i've got a chance and i said and you will and you will do something with it and lo and behold you know he's the guy hoisting the trophy he, he certainly was and uh, it, an, an iconic moment and it was really cool as well to see the raw emotion come out of Nick Taylor similar when Brooke Henderson won in Canada in 2018 you know I, I I have a lot of similarities with Brooke and Nick in in terms of their demeanor you generally don't see them get too high or too low on the golf course they they keep that even keeledness uh, if you will but how cool was it just to see the, the the real human side of Nick come out you know the, the putter flip the, the you know crying with Amanda Renner on air just that raw emotion how cool was that yeah no that was super I think shock yeah. when he um when that putt went in and the mic drop or the putter drop or whatever you want to call it <laughs> um and then everything that happened after that but you know I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back I just got off Twitter and I just was looking at um the media feed, which I didn't know Nick did the walk and talk yesterday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I listened to that. And, you know, there will be some that will criticize us for doing that mm-hmm. and opening ourselves up to it. But I really think that it is, it shows um, that human side. And it also is, you know, I don't know whether it lets us off the hook or gives us accountability or keeps us in the game because golf is a long is a long round Mm -hmm. and your head can go into many different places and listening to him talk to trevor and trevor was so awesome in the questions he was asking that i i think that gave him a boost Mm -hmm. at least it gave me a boost listening to it to say okay he's taking responsibility for where he is and he is the only one that can do something about um his play and and whether or not it's going to be good enough today i had a feeling when i went to st louis after finishing second a gazillion times and trying to get across the line. And I had a woman come to me. I can see her face. I had no idea who she was. She said, this is your week. And I looked at her and I said, I'm the only one that can do something about it. And yes, it will be. Yeah. Uh, you know, good for good for Nick Taylor doing. Oh, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, the broadcast time and time again. I, I want to say seven or eight, ten times. You know, said you know he could have easily said no that this was prearranged. But you know, good on uh, good on Nick Taylor. We're in conversation here uh, with Laurie Kane. Switching gears here a little bit. Uh, you are the newest brand ambassador of Exonic Golf. So h- how did this whole partnership come to be? Well, it came, it came to be through some work. Um, I'm represented by Wasserman Group, yes. and uh, Jordan Snowy is my point person. And, um, you know, there's a lot happening in the AI world and apps, and um, this is a Canadian company um, who I've, uh, you know, quickly learned a lot about. Um, got to spend some time with uh, the founder um, at Bayview, Eileen, and I'll tell you, um, I'm not real techie, uh, but this product, I think, can help uh, the average golfer. Um, and as the slogan says, you don't need to do it alone. Um, you know, our checklists when we head to the golf course after a lesson or um, trying to figure out how to play, your brain can get pretty confused. Um, well, if you use the Exonic IQ um, app, it can answer the questions for you. And I, it's very similar to how I played um, with the help of Danny Sharp, my caddy. Mm-hmm. Um, and my, you know, I worked enough with Bob um, Rotella that he would say, when you've missed a shot, uh, the next shot you need to put a clinic on. Mm-hmm. And I never messed up doing a clinic. 
And this app has enough little help and pointers that you can go in, get the information, and then apply it. Mm. Um, and even better, Adam, the cool thing is, is that I think be- the more information the app gets, uh, the better it can help you, and then you can take it back to your teaching coach or your teaching pro, and he or she can help you with what exactly does happen when you're on the golf course because between the driving range and or the practice tee, as we call it, and the first tee, a lot can happen. <laughs> yeah, it certainly can. And another cool thing about this app, I, I have used it uh, as well, is that it's great for for any skill level of golfer, whether you're you're up there in the ranks and have played golf at a very high level or you're your average 20 handicap, correct? A hundred percent. And that's the part that um, I think is, is the most cool, that it doesn't, like a lot of times, I think the average beginner would say, well, I don't need that because, you know, I'm just learning. Well, that's the person that I think the app applies to just as much as me. Um, because it just gives those one or two little pointers that you just need to remember. Instead of trying to remember a handful of things, um, you can just, you know, it might remind you about ball position. It might remind you about the lead shoulder, the trail shoulder. It might, you know, whatever it needs to do. What do you do at a thick grass? Downhill lie, uphill lie. Um, so it just, you know, thick, a quick fix uh, can make the game faster for sure and also more enjoyable. It certainly is. ExonicGolf.com is the website. Exonic is spelled X-O-N-I-C. Laura, you're the latest brand ambassador for Exonic Golf. Now, before we let you go, I have to ask you, of course, about Brooke Henderson. She's got a very busy summer ahead of her. I can't wait to see the U.S. Women's Open at Pebble Beach. I got to go to Pebble Beach myself back in September. Obviously, what an iconic venue that is. But how excited are you to see what the next step is for Brooke Henderson, who's already done so much in her career? Yeah, I think Brooke is is taking, you know, she got a quick win at uh, Lake Nona at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I haven't spoken to Brooke, but I've been kind of reading between the lines. And I think because of the way our schedule is set up with so many big events, the majors coming um, fast and furious, I think she's trying to just um, ease her way into a schedule that she's well-rested. You know, I was... I love the driver tip off the deck. I don't think there's a player <laughs> alive that hits it like she does. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're right. I think um, I think she's probably got her sights set on definitely the U.S. Open, uh, KPMG, um, all of those things that are coming down the pipeline. And she'll be ready. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that, uh, you know, she and Brittany will, will figure out what they need to do at each of the courses that they play and um, will not surprise me if she hoists another trophy very soon. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I'm so excited to see uh, Brooke as we move ahead here, especially, you know, the CK, the CPKC Women's Open, which is at Shaughnessy, a great venue. Can't wait to see it go on there. So that, that's Brooke Henderson. But, Lori, well, what's next for you in, in terms of golf? Um, well, I'm, I'm not playing and not going to be able to play very much competitive golf um, probably until the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, I have some conflicts when it comes to the – uh, senior U.S. Open being the same week as the CPKC mm-hmm. Women's Open. Um, I know that I played my last last year, as, mo- as everyone is aware, yep. um, but I still want to be present. Um, you're right, playing Shaughnessy. Uh, I think any time that we play a, a course, a championship course like Shaughnessy, that the men have played, it, it elevates us. Mm-hmm. And CPKC is, is doing its best, along with Golf Canada, to take us to venues that, that matter. And uh, Shaughnessy matters. Um, I'm, I'm going to just be on the sidelines, but I will play some, uh, doing a lot of corporate stuff and enjoying the game. And, um, I, like I said, I was, uh, flattered that I could be around Oakdale this past week and, and that people, uh, the reception was very warm heartening. Um, yeah, so I'll be here on PEI doing some stuff. Um, Lindsay Knowlton from Iron Ladies Golf is coming. Uh, we have the PEI, uh, Lori Kane uh, ladies outing that um, I'll be hosting at Mill River along with uh, Katie White and Lindsay Knowlton. Um, the three of us are tailor-made uh, staffers, so we're looking forward to entertaining and showing off uh, Mill River and Eagles Glen. Um, I'll be busy, Adam, um, and of course, uh, cheering my Canadian friends uh, as the summer goes. Absolutely. I, I had a chance to catch up with uh, with Lindsay as well at uh, the Open last week, and it was, it was great, and she was talking to me about this event, and I know you're excited. She's so excited. 
you. Well, Lori, thanks so much for your time this morning discussing what is one of the most iconic moments in Canadian sports history. Thanks for your time today, and we'll catch up again soon. Thanks, Kelly.